to the, the Big Buyers Observer Group update webinar. Um, my name is Simon Clement. I work for ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability, and I am coordinating the Big Buyers for Climate and Environment initiative on behalf of the European Commission. Um, and the purpose of the webinar this afternoon is to give you all um, a little picture of what is happening within the Big Buyers initiative, um, what our different working groups are doing, what they have achieved, um, and what they will be doing um, in the upcoming year. And also uh, to allow you, of course, to ask any questions that you may have um, about the, the initiative and about the working groups in particular. And it's great to see that we have a, a wide variety of different uh, people with us today. So those who are directly involved already in the Big Buyers Working Groups, um, those who are following our activities through the Observer Group uh, itself, um, and also several who are not yet involved in the Big Buyers Initiative, but hopefully uh, will be so from, from here on in. Um, before that kicks off, a couple of housekeeping rules. You will have noticed that the, the event is being recorded, and this is, of course, so that we can allow others outside of the group here present to also learn about what we are doing as well. Um, we will make this recording available uh, through the Big Buyers website. Um, I've already asked in the chat if people can change their name as well, so that that includes the organization that you are uh, working for. It should be relatively straightforward on the right hand side of the of the screen to change the, the name the way you record and put your organization in brackets so we can all see who, who is here and who is with us. Um, I, everybody I think is already familiar with of course the other rules but please keep yourself muted when you're not speaking so we can avoid any uh, background noise um, and please feel free uh, to use the, the comments as well to ask any questions you have to make any um, um, comments regarding the presentations. Um, we will have someone checking the comments so we should be able to, to pick up on any points that are being being made there. Okay, um, however, before we kick off with the updates from the different working groups, I wanted to briefly talk about the initiative itself. So for those particularly who are not so familiar um, with the Big Buyers Initiative, not yet. Yes, Brown. So a short reminder, if you could mute yourselves when you're not speaking, this would be very helpful. Um, okay, so Big Buyers for Climate and Environment is an initiative of the European Commission uh, run by DG Grow, um, and it's currently being managed uh, in partnership by ICLEI and Eurocities. And the initiative itself is designed to be a collaboration between big buyers in Europe uh, on strategic public procurement, with the aim being to drive the market for innovative and sustainable goods um, and services. We currently have four different working groups that are established. Um, these have been running now for several months um, and will continue to run until the end, um, until November or October next year at the latest, at the earliest rather. Um, one of those is on zero emission construction sites, um, another on circular construction. We have a group on digital solutions in the healthcare sector um, and a group on electric heavy duty vehicles. And these groups were selected based on a needs assessment of those who were involved in uh, the Big Buyers Initiative to see which are the areas where you feel um, there's most scope for collaboration between public buyers at the European level to help drive innovative goods and services. Um, and we'll hear more about those groups throughout the session. Just a quick overview about really why we are doing this activity or why the Commission is, is supporting this, this activity. Why are we talking about European collaboration between public buyers? So if we look at this from the perspective of the buyers themselves, and this is public organisations of any type, whether this is a, a city government, a regional administration, uh, a big national association or a national agency, a national government ministry, et cetera, any type of public body with purchasing power. Of course, if we are combining the purchasing power of a number of different organizations, we're able to have a lot more influence on the market and the market will listen to us uh, in a lot more detail. Um, so therefore, Putting this purchasing power together allows us to walk, work much more closely and effectively on market consultations and, and market dialogue as well. Collaboration here also enables us uh, to share the information that each of us has about technologies, products that are available, new technologies that are coming out, how prices may be different across Europe, other types of knowledge that each of us have individually, which are of use 
to public authorities in other countries as well. What we also do within the group um, is focus on different types of procurement approach and procurement methodology that we can potentially apply in relation to those different subjects. So whether this relates to life cycle analysis methodologies or life cycle costing methodologies, looking at different approaches we have towards market engagement, reaching out, having dialogue with market actors, or the direct application of specific procurement criteria how we are setting specifications, how we are setting a, a, a evaluation and award criteria, for example, and many other aspects related to uh, the procurement approaches being taken. Um, from the side of the companies, um, what we can also see is that the Big Buyers Initiative is trying to provide a fertile testing and piloting ground for more innovative goods and services. So through this, we are trying to encourage research and development on the European market, effectively. Um, what we also hope is that by um, working together, working jointly, presenting our demands and our needs to the market coherently, it allows market actors to better understand those needs and to better address them in a coherent way. Um, the more that we can align what we're asking of the market, of course, the easier it is for the market to respond to those needs and challenges. Okay, that's a quick introduction to the Big Buyers Group for those who maybe don't know us so, so well. I mentioned that we have four specific working groups where we have a series of public buyers who are already working in collaboration on those topics. Those groups are closed to participation as it stands at the moment, but we are very aware that there are many people interested uh, in the work of those groups, in what is happening there, what the results are and what the planned activities are as well. And so for this reason, we have established an observer group um, and any um, public organization or interested stakeholder um, can join the observer group. Um, and through this, they will receive updates and opportunities in a number of ways. So one example of that, of course, is the webinar that we, were having, we are having today. Um, and there will be two webinars happening per year throughout the event as well, potentially as specialized webinars uh, on specific topics uh, on a needs basis. We will also provide regular updates directly through uh, emails that we have, um, an email newsletter that goes out semi-regularly, um, providing direct updates on the working groups. This is also an opportunity for, for those who are participating in the observer group to also share their interests. Um, so, of course, you can approach the, the Secretariat of ICLE and Eurocities at any time if there are specific areas of collaboration which you think are interesting for you. So those of you who are not already members of the Observer Group, um, I've put the link in below. And through this, you will be able to uh, join up with the group. Um, alternatively, you could simply send an email to, to me or my colleagues at uh, ICLE and Eurocities, um, and we can bring you in as well. Good. OK. So before we kick off the uh, working group sessions in detail, uh, we have a few questions for the audience. Um, before we start. So I, I'm pretty sure that everyone by now is fairly familiar with Slido and how this works. Um, so, and Caitlin has put this link in the chat. If I could ask everybody to go to Slido now, and you can use the, uh, the hashtag big buyers to find the questions that we have. Okay, so hopefully everybody is there. Caitlin, let's start the first question. Okay, so the first question, a simple one. What type of organization do you represent? Public purchasing body, a research organization, other, or a private company? And not surprisingly, we have quite a a large majority of public purchasing bodies uh, with us today. Very good. I think we've had about two thirds of people responding to this already. So Oh, we've moved on to the next question already, Caitlin. So we can see from the first group that the majority, the large majority of people here are public uh, purchasing organizations. Next question within this, are you directly involved in the actual procurement 
of goods and services yourselves directly? Or is this a topic that is of interest to you? And here we have a much more varied response. A dead heat almost. Okay, very good. So I think we can see that we have a, a really good mix here. We have a, a, a number of people who are obviously directly involved in the procurement process, which is great to see, but a number of others also who realize that public procurement is an interesting and potentially very powerful tool. Um, and uh, so it's great to have you both sets of people, I think, with us um, here in this meeting. Okay, should we go on to the third and final question before we kick off? Uh, are you already involved? in the Big Buyers for Climate and Environment initiative. Different possibilities here. Yes, you're participating directly in one of the working groups mentioned. Yes, you're already part of the observer group. Not yet, but do sign me up. Um, or I haven't heard of it and I'll decide after the webinar. Excellent. Okay, so again, we have a good variety of those who are thoroughly involved in what we're doing, those who are paying attention, following what we are doing, um, but also a good number of people who are not yet involved in either the working groups or the observer group, um, and so who hopefully will join us after the meeting we have here today. Great, I think we maybe have one more question before we move on. Good. Probably the most important question that I can ask uh, this afternoon. Who is going to win the World Cup next year? Now, I've represented all of the people who will speak in today's session. So we have Germany, we have the Netherlands, we have England, we have Italy, we have Norway, we have none of the above. Or a final option, I would rather watch a building being selectively with emission-free machinery demolished than football. Okay, well, I think we're getting a very good picture there that none of our speakers will be particularly happy with. There's either very little interest in football or none of these uh, uh, participants are likely to do very well. There is, in fact, a very important game between two of these countries today, which could decide the fate of, uh, of the World Cup. In any case, so let's pay more attention to construction uh, than football for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you for sharing that, Caitlin. Maybe we can stop there. Back to the group as a whole. Um, so next stop will be um, some short presentations from each of the working group leads about the activities of those groups and an opportunity for each of you also to ask questions. However, before we kick into that, kick off with that, um, I think we have Ivo Locatelli from DG Grow with us. Um, and Ivo, maybe you would like to say um, a few words about the initiative before we go further. Yes, uh, many thanks, uh, Simon, and um, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first thing, I would like to say that I see uh, some maybe usual suspects, but also some uh, very new names and uh, from uh, new municipalities, cities, uh, buyers, and this is all very good for us because this shows the interest for this initiative. Uh, I think that uh, for us, this is a very, very important initiative. Uh, we have held a uh, first pilot. We started with a small scale, which was uh, very successful. It ended up very well. And that's why we have uh, continued the, the project with a, with a new project, which will last until uh, November of uh, last year. Um, why this project is very interesting? Because uh, first, it focuses on buyers' needs. The activities are really decided bottom up by the buyers. Secondly, it focuses very much on activities which are linked to the main challenges of Europe today, sustainability, digitization, so the twin transitions. And also, I would say that it's very important that participants' participation takes place voluntarily. This means that all those which are sitting in the working groups they do it because uh, they feel this is necessary for them. It's useful for, for them. Uh, the work which is taking place in the uh, working group is uh, very good for us. Uh, of course, it's very promising. Uh, we hope that by the end of the group, 
we will uh, certainly continue with the work on market engagement. Today, this morning, we had a very interesting webinar on connecting to the ecosystem. And I think that this is also a very important area uh, for, for this group in order to stimulate innovation and uh, be able to catch what is happening into the, the market uh, place, given that markets are changing very, very uh, quickly. We also plan to continue this exercise, uh, continue with the, this project, and we are working uh, to this effect. Uh, I cannot disclose anything further at this very moment, but of course, we think that this is a very, very important project, given that by gathering big buyers, it can generate significant impact on, uh, on the, uh, let's say, industry. For example, if we take the case of, for example, of zero emission construction site or the case of a circular construction material, well, these are uh, industries which generate a significant value added all over the value chain. There are many intermediaries, let's say, which are indirectly involved in the development of uh, these new innovations. There are adaptations also, for example, in the zero emission construction site with regard to the provision of electricity. So the number of actors and players are very relevant. And of course, by gathering experience, by putting all this know-how and knowledge together and working in a way of, of, of co let's say, collective intelligence, certainly it's going to bring results. I think that uh, um, with this, I can conclude uh, my, my, my speech, I just encourage all those which have just an interest and they've joined this, uh, this group for the first time that they will continue to be involved in, uh, in this activity as an observer or in any future activities that we are going to launch as part of our uh, policy on public procurement. Many thanks. Great. Thank you very much, um, Ivo. Yeah. And it's, of course, excellent to have the, the strong support of DG Grow and the Commission in, in the work that we're trying to do within this network and encouraging this collaboration between public buyers. So let's dig into some of the detail for this. Um, each of these groups, as Ivo has mentioned, is, is based on uh, the needs of those who are involved in the, in the initiative directly um, and have been now operating for some time. Um, so each of the, the leads will share with us what they have been doing um, and then what the next steps are for the group. And we'll kick off with uh, Richard Brabus from the city of Rotterdam, who will talk to us about the heavy duty electric vehicles working group. So Richard, over to you. Thank you. I will share my screen. Um, do you see my screen? Yep, we can see it perfectly. Okay, fine. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Richard Brabus. Uh, category buyer, transport and mobility for the city of Rotterdam. And in the next 20 minutes, I will inform you about the results of the working group heavy duty uh, electric vehicles. And the focus of this group is on electrifying the fleet of electric waste collection vehicles, uh, about heavy and smaller vehicles, and electric street cleaning vehicles and, and sweepers. And in ad addition to the vehicles, charging infrastructure is also important. This, this also belongs to the scope of this group. And finally, the fleet of a city is wider than waste collection and sweepers. And for this reason, we, the working group also focus on other vehicles like tractors and vans. The activities we organize are in line with the following, following goals. First goal is continue market dialogue and product comparison. Uh, most, most activities this year had to play, take place online, but that makes it also easier to invite suppliers for a webinar. And we invited the, follow, the following suppliers, VDL, Scania, and ADAX. And at this moment, we are we trying to organize a webinar with Total and Bellert Power System. And these suppliers are active in charging infrastructure. 
Second objective of the group is to prepare pilots in real life condition. And fin finally, in my opinion, is it a challenging goal is to develop future set of su sustainability procurement criteria also for vehicle components like batteries and tires. tires. The, the participants, we divide them into buyers, followers, and multipliers. And the, the current uh, participants are listed on this sheet. Um, in my opinion, it's also an, an interesting group. Many participants involved and it has their own experience, challenges, and expertise. It's also an act, act, active group because the participation in activities is very high. And now can I explain our approach in Rotterdam. In Rotterdam, our goal is to have a completely emission fleet by 2030. And uh, several electric vehicles have been added this year. For example, an electric waste collection truck. See the, see the photo above right. An hydrogen sewer cleaner and electric sweepers. Charging infrastructure is also a challenge for Rotterdam. We are exploring options to increase that. And one of the solutions of, of, we, we use is the battery storage energy system. And we call that in Rotterdam the, the BES. And you see a picture uh, below of the BES in Rotterdam. And the working group invites several suppliers for a webinar. And we would like to inform the observer group about the highlights. First, a VDL Translift is a, a supplier based in the Netherlands. And this supplier produced waste collection systems with a modular design. VDL can provide electric vehicles for mini containers and underground containers, as you can see in the image in the middle. And the driving range of the electric waste collection vehicles is around 100 kilometers. Uh, second, Scania is a well-known truck supplier. In addition to supplying electric vehicles, they also can deliver a hybrid vehicle. And the hybrid vehicle is, in my opinion, an interesting, interesting vehicle for the longer distance. And because the driving range of this vehicle is around 250 kilometers. And Scania also offers other services and, for example, charging infrastructure. And a picture of the Scania vehicle, you can see, you can see right at the top. And finally, we have also had a web webinar with ADAX. And ADAX provides a more compact electric vehicle for inner city use. And this vehicle can be tailored for the sp specific needs for the city. Uh, the working group have been working together for a while now. And it, at this moment, the working group has the following lessons learned and challenges. Uh, first, um, multiple cities used smaller vehicles. Um, but electric, electric trucks are currently being de developed in standard formats. And smaller vehicles are custom made and more expensive. And second, we are looking for solutions for the retrofitting of, of vehicles. And the examples of retrofitting I know are mainly new vehicles. In the future, in the future it will also be, also be interesting to retrofit exciting existing vehicles. 
And the third aspect is the maintenance and warranty of batteries. There is still a lot of uncertainty among buyers about battery lifetime and warranty. There are no standards for this yet. And the last challenges are about charging infrastructure. We see more and more charging stations for electric passenger vehicles in public spaces, but uh, these are not suitable for electric heavy duty vehicles. More fast charges are required for heavy duty vehicles. And finally, the charging infrastructure for heavy duty is not standardized. Um, this sheet is, is, is next. And in addition to the digital me meetings, we want to organize an in-person meeting again. And we had, we had Gothenburg in mind for two years now. And I'm very excited about the program because during this meeting in February, we will speak with Volvo, Scania, and Nordisk at the vein. And um, this is the first uh, uh, in-person meeting na two years uh, uh, online meetings. So that was a short uh, explanation of the progress of the working group Heavy Duty Electric Vehicles. Uh, thanks for your attention. And uh, are there any questions for now? Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Richard, for the, the overview of, of what's happening within the group um, and the activities that have been taking place. And yeah, you, you alluded to the challenges that we faced over the last year with, um, with COVID, of course, and the, the lack of possibility to have face-to-face -face meetings. Um, maybe while we're waiting for questions from others, and please feel free to put them in the chat, I wonder, could you tell us about how, how you think that has affected the meetings? So is it still possible to have uh, good supply market dialogue sessions online with suppliers. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's also it's also easier to have webinars. Um, the suppliers we invited are all uh, in in Europe, so we have suppliers from the Netherlands, from Belgium, or in the northern Volvo, and a webinar is very easy to organize. Uh, it's also interesting to see a factory. So I'm uh, very excited about the, 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 the trip in February. But webinars is a good uh, alternate, alternative. Absolutely. Okay. Um, question from Anita. Uh, did the market consultations lead to different insights to the buyers working together? So what do you think have been the main outcomes from these market consultations in that sense? Ah, I think that the, the, um, it is a question. Um, I think the cities have this, the same uh, challenge, challenge and the same uh, we need is also the same. But the most of the question, questions in the market consultation is, on, is also ma maintenance. Um, the, the suppliers will, can, will can live, deliver vehicles are stationed all over Europe and not in every city of every country are the uh, trucks uh, available. And I think that is a different question from also in Portugal, Italy, can I also buy the vehicle and is there also local maintenance? Um, I think that's the, the yeah, in, in, in difference between the cities. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Um, any further questions from others? Um, there was a question in the in the chat about the uh, contact details for you, Richard. I think so. Just um, to confirm what Caitlin has been answering there, all yeah, of the awesome. yeah. yeah, all of the presentations <laughs> will be available uh, uh, to to all of you, um, together with the recording of this webinar as well. And Caitlin has also put Richard's email address directly in the chat, so anyone can contact you directly and uh, 
get, maybe get some more detailed answers to any specific questions. Um, anything further before uh, we move on, or if anyone would like to share their own experiences in relation to heavy duty electric vehicles, of course, as well. Um, you can either raise your hand or you can put a question in the chat. If there's nothing immediately, um, maybe we can then move on to the next presentation. Of course, you can continue to drop uh, points into the chat and we can answer them as we go or we can answer them after the event There's a as question. Well. Yeah. There's a question, okay. It's a difficult question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So from, from Toro, as we see in the presentation, one of the problems is with the batteries in the end of their life. Is the company's, is there a strategy for the future of how to dispose of the batteries? Yeah. Is that something that you've looked at in the group at all, Richard? No, not yet. And uh, yeah, batteries is, is a diff difficult topic for me. Uh, also, uh, buying the batteries, and uh, we can also look uh, uh, how they are produced, uh, human rights with the batteries, so this is a, a huge topic and uh, <laughs> I will invite all the buyers to uh, join, join the working group and, uh, yeah, and, and answer these questions in the future. But uh, yeah, that's difficult. And also in Rotterdam, we have, we have buy an electric truck and, uh, yeah, and, the, um, and after a few, a few years, the batteries are uh, improved. And there's also a question from, can you change that simple? Um, there's also a, a difficult question. Yeah, the question that also touches on standardization as well between the yeah. different um, manufacturers. If I can um, say something about that. Well, and go ahead, yes. Well, at the moment we are doing a market consultation, but it's it's for smaller vehicles. It's for, 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 um, yeah, vents may uh, fence actually, uh, um, and and to clean the city, etc. And and we ask that question a lot uh, as well with the batteries, and they all give a, a warranty for for at least eight years. I think it's something, it's some it's it's a regulation. And if you ask how they how they what do they do with the with the batteries after their lifetime, they have no there's no experience. But they all say, well, we start up a factory to to to. To reproduce the, the uh, reuse the batteries, etc., almost to 100 percent. But it's there is no no um, 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 uh, how do you say that the content? I don't know. Um, it's not not proved yet. But they all were all working on, on it. That that's what, what what we noticed in the last days with that market consultation. So it's it's all quite new. And Absolutely. There are also, yeah. there are also uh, uh, manufacturers who will are willing to give a, a, a longer um, a warranty if they are uh, if they can do the maintenance as well. So, um, but that's that's once again for smaller uh, fans. But well, it, it's it, it, it's it's all about batteries. So maybe it's something uh, useful. And uh, the next uh, webinars are with uh, Total Energies. I think you know Total from France and better power systems. I think a good question that you'll take it into the, the webinar with the suppliers. Yeah, I think within this discussion, this has often felt like the elephant in the room when we're talking about the batteries. So there's, of course, a move towards electrification. But then the question is, what about the batteries? And we don't have clear answers for it yet. And of course, someone has put in a comment there about the issue with uh, conflict minerals in relation to batteries as well. Um, so there are multiple issues, no doubt, with this. Um, very good. Any further questions here? Um, Todor, are you talking about the supercapacitor? I don't know whether, Todor, would you like to um, make the point yourself? You could unmute yourself. Yes, yes, of course, if you let me. I, I already have the opportunity to work with your Simon in the SGP regions project. And we have, I think, a small step in the double municipality. We successfully choose for the vehicles electric buses with the ultra capacitors. So according to the supplier, when we have the ultra super capacitor, there is less uh, harmful materials. And also we have a longer uh, exploitation period. So only the, the time will show is this correct or not. 
but our uh, vision is that uh, for now it's a little bit more eco if you were able to, to say that but also it's a good solution only, uh, only for maybe buses or if there uh, is a very good infrastructure because the, our buses are with a range for 30 kilometers. So this is from the one end of the, the, the city to the other and the end points we have the chargers. So it's very used, good for, for, for now and for this uh, needs, maybe for the presented needs as a drug center, heavy duty trucks, it's not very useful to, to have a range from only 30 or 40 kilometers. So maybe in this uh, market consultation, it will be a good uh, if they are able to discuss with the supplier, with the companies, is there any change, especially for the, the trucks, the, the small trucks that they present to, to have some combined between the standard batteries and uh, supercapacitors to, and to, to have a little bit less harmful uh, materials uh, used in the batteries. So this is what my, my uh, personal experience with our project and uh, what we've already have in Gabu. So thank you. Yeah, thanks very much for the input, uh, Todor, and great to, great to speak to you again as well. I don't know whether anyone from the working group wants to address then that point, Richard. Is that something that you've looked at or would consider looking at? Um, yeah, we, we, we looked at and I will. Uh, I think it's good that I will contact uh, Todor to discuss this further. Uh, so, uh, Todor, uh, I will mail you. <laughs> uh, yes, it would be a pleasure for me. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Okay, two further comments have been dropped in the chat, and we have someone from the city of Gothenburg with us um, today. So, Peter, um, I don't know whether you want to give us a quick introduction to the link that you you shared with us in the chat as well. Uh, well, no, not really. I just uh, stumbled on it this morning. Uh, so uh, I just want to share it, and you can read yourself. Very good. Thank you. Okay, many thanks for that. So we can look at that within the working group. And then a question from, from John about whether we're making available a list of the vehicles that have been reviewed and the positives and negatives. So what, what information is is available to be shared, Richard, on, on the types of vehicles? Yeah, it was, it was for, uh, one of our goals is to uh, compare pilots uh, in the group and uh, we will make... Um, uh, we will also we will also share that with the group. Uh, we, maybe in the next presentation with Observer Group, we can also share that with you. Um, so see, yeah, we, have a, we have a list of the vehicles, uh, what is possible and what not. And, and if I uh, see in Rotterdam, we have uh, different electric vehicles, but also uh, vehicles uh, were not, not available. For example, the, the winter equipment. Uh, yeah, that's the next step to make that electric or zero emission. Um, so the next years or the next months, if a uh, new discussion between group and and no and topics, and a good idea to, to make a list of the vehicles. Excellent. Yeah, so we'll we'll have a look at what can be shared outside of the working group as well. Um, as mentioned, there will be regular updates to the observer group, not just through these webinars, but by email as well. Um, so we'll she, see what could be shared in that direction and make it available to people. Excellent. Well, some very useful discussions and inputs there. Um, good to see there's a lot of interest in this topic. Um, I think we will move on now to the next working group. But again, if there are continued comments or things come to mind uh, relating to electric heavy duty electric vehicles, then please drop them in the chat. You also have Richard's contact details, so you can approach him directly on that as well. Good. Um, okay. In that case, let's move on to our next group, uh, which is focused on zero emission uh, construction sites. And for this, we are going to move across to Guru from Oslo. Um, the floor is yours, Guru. I think you want to share your screen directly. Yes, thank you. Uh, can you see my screen now? We can, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, thank you, Simon. 
Uh, yes, I'm Guru and I'm a sustainability advisor within, uh, within uh, construction in the procurement department of the city of Oslo. And in Oslo, we have had a great focus on emissions from our construction sites for the past years. And we've already experienced a great progress and development in the markets. Uh, but thanks to the big buyers working group for zero emission construction sites, STEMCONS, uh, we now see an expanding demand, and which is very necessary to really succeed in this. Because being a first mover as Oslo is uh, only a success when, when we have followers and we have we see the next movers. So it's very inspiring to have this working group and these meetings to discuss and, uh, with other buyers across Europe. Uh, the focus of the group is, uh, of course, sustainable construction, and we have narrowed this focus into uh, working um, the, uh, to be working and promoting low and um, zero emission construction on site using public procurement. The working group's focus is on driving the transition from conventional to fossil free and preferably zero emission non-road mobile machinery. And to succeed in this transition, we must as buyers facilitate for the infrastructure and plan our proje project in a very new way. Uh, as well, measuring the impact and communicating the benefits to politicians and decision makers is very important to keep the focus up. Uh, we have a great group of buyers in this uh, working group in this period. Uh, Oslo, Copenhagen, Helsinki, Vanta, Amsterdam, Eindhoven and Vienna are all planning or are all in different uh, different uh, stages in the process of carrying out SEMCON's pilot projects. And we also have um, a group of followers and multipliers and expert and collaborators who's following this group. And despite not uh, being able to meet over the past uh, soon two years, we have worked out a working plan and we already started with a range of activities, both as a group and locally in the cities. As I said, um, some of the groups, are, my group members are already uh, doing pilots. Oslo, Helsinki, Copenhagen and Eindhoven is, uh, are all doing uh, pilots of zero emission construction sites. And, um, and we see that Amsterdam, Stockholm, Vanta, Brussels and Vienna are planning their pilots. Uh, the group's objective is to reach out to the market with a common message. We will make sure that the demand for zero emission machinery will increase in the coming years. We will keep talking to the market actors to express our plans and to align the demand with the possibilities in the market. And the working group is also very useful in order to exchange experience and knowledge uh, in this up and coming area. And together we explore the common challenge, challenges as they arise. In Oslo, as I said, we started to focus on reducing emissions from construction in 2016. And, um, and uh, yeah, clean construction is an area where we have had a great deal of progress already. And I'll take you through the approach we have in the city of Oslo. Uh, we started out with this market dialogue, inviting businesses to work together with the city to achieve fossil free construction on city infrastructure projects like schools, kindergartens, nursery homes, roads and water pipes. Uh, and it, came out quite easy to switch from fossil diesel to fossil free diesel, just uh, with a transition to biofuels. But as uh, biofuels is uh, a limited resource, we want to go zero emission with electric uh, non-road mobile machinery. 
and that's more complicated. Uh, in the city of Oslo, we stated that from 2025, we will have zero emission construction sites only. And until then, we will uh, use award criteria to promote the suppliers who can deliver zero emission technology uh, on their projects. And we put quite a high percentage rating on the environmental performance, often 30%. And we give, give credit to the suppliers that promise in their bid to complete the, the assignment, assignment with a zero emission technology. And this figure shows how we now weight the different aspects under the award criteria environment. Uh, out of the environment criteria, at least 50% of the total weighting shall be attributed to the construction work and the transport related to it. And the other environmental aspects that is relevant to each uh, single project uh, is the, uh, the, the project owner can fill in um, in the, the, the word criteria other environment. It can be waste, biodiversity, uh, circular materials, or environmental product declarations, or anything else related to environment, of course. But uh, this method using award criteria has showed out to be quite uh, effective. And we see here a figure from uh, the development of the energy use for construction machinery on the projects that uh, carried out by Os the Oslo Water Agency uh, in so far in 2021. The green color here shows the share of electricity used in construction machines. And the uh, yellow is diesel, regular diesel, and the blue is HVO. So we see the three first quarters uh, this year that the electricity share has really grown. And um, they've got quite uh, far in the, in the water agency in electrifying their projects. Yeah, and over the past two years, using these criteria, we have uh, learned a lot and handling electric uh, infrastructure is a new role for the buyers. And we have to handle this at the very early stage. That's why we established a very close dialogue with the grid operator in Oslo. And as, a uh, as the share and the size of the electric machinery will increase in the future, and the need for power will increase accordingly. Grid upgrades can be very expensive, and we see, now see that battery containers are a solution in, in a several projects. We experience a growing need for energy advisors. We see that the advisors on energy supply can provide the contractors with the necessary capacity in the different stage of the construction process. These stakeholders are quite new to the market and they offer to take charge of the power, literally, <laughs> and at the construction site, uh, offering a combination of upgrading the grid, installing battery containers and working on the logistics. A very close dialogue with the contractors is also very important to us both on the project level, but also on a, a higher level. Uh, uh, we are very dependent on the contractors and they are dependent on us to succeed in 2025. Uh, we, we are still in a transition phase. The technology is, uh, needs much more development. And uh, we have this ambition of being zero emission by 2025, but uh, market development and innovation in the transition period is just as important as uh, reducing emissions in each uh, single project. In the big buyers working group, we've had also identified some common challenges that we we are suited for, <laughs> we work together. The challenges 
stretches from lack of a political framework to reduce, uh, there's a lack of a political framework to reduce emissions from non-road mobile machinery. And uh, there's lack of technology. We see that the, the, the heavy machinery are, are not still, uh, still not being serial produ produced. They're retrofit the machinery that's available, available at the market now are all retrofitted, uh, which makes them quite expensive. And it's also the issue of power supply. And to smoothen this transition for uh, others, we have we, we will share the lessons that we've learned so far. Uh, it's important to have the political political will and funding to carry out the first semcons. And we will advise to choose um, uh, visible uh, but not too complicated pilot sites. The dialogue with the market is really key to set the right requirements based uh, on the market maturity. And joining forces like we do in the big buyers is very useful to drive the transition at a bigger scale. Now we are very happy to finally plan our in-person meeting here in Oslo in just two weeks. Uh, we will have the opportunity to visit one of the water agency's construction sites, uh, a site that actually became zero emission by accident <laughs> by using the award criteria. And we will also dive into the issue of power supply and we will have a market dialogue with actors, uh, different actors in the market, both the machinery suppliers and also contractors. So I'm really looking forward to see you many of you here in Oslo in two weeks. So thank you. And Simon, will you push that master button you have? <laughs> the master button to stop your screen sharing. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Guru. And yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing your accidental zero emission construction site in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, it will be good to kick these meetings off again. But no, great to hear um, what's happening within the group and also the successes that uh, Oslo are having and are continuing to have with this. And I, I think also this is a very good example. It's a, it's a model example of, of, um, of these types of collaborations. This was clearly something where Oslo had a, a specific need, a clear ambition, but also recognition that um, despite being a, a sizable city, this was not something that you could necessarily do on your own, um, but the help with collaboration with other buyers in other countries was really beneficial in trying to drive this market. And we are seeing uh, the results of this, um, I think now. Um, good to have questions from, from the audience. So as before, please put questions in your chat or raise the hand. Um, in, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, Guru, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the type of reaction that you have had from um, the suppliers uh, that you talk to so far to, to get a sense of how that market is developing. Do you see it developing quite rapidly or, or um, are there still barriers there? Yeah, we see them uh, develop quite rapidly. We have, uh, when we started this in 2019, well, the, developing the award criteria, we had about 19 big electric escalators in the Oslo area. And now, by now we have almost 200. Mm. And we hear that from the, the suppliers that next year they plan to take in 250 more. So it's uh, increasing quite rapidly. And they, they're all positive. They've been positive all the, all the way. And very, it's a, been a very good collaboration between the contractors and the machine suppliers and uh, Oslo and all other cities in Norway as well. And this is something you've built into the process beginning, the, the dialogue, not doing this independently, but rather speaking in, in close detail with each of the suppliers to work out what's possible. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Are, are there any questions from uh, from the participants here? Or if anybody themselves has experiences with uh, zero emission machinery or attempts at experiences with zero emission machinery? Okay. Looks at this stage if there's not, but um, 
again, so we will have the presentation from Guru shared, um, which will contain her contact details as well. So if anyone would like to get in touch directly, then please do so or uh, continue to put your, your questions in the, the chat here as well. Um, good. Okay. In that case, I think we can then move on to the, the next working group that we have. Um, Oh, I will, nope, sorry, before we do that, Guru, there is a question that's just come in at the last minute um, regarding the, the calculation of CO2 emissions from the construction site and how you do that. Could you share a little more detail? Well, in Oslo, we just count the electric uh, machinery and the electric vehicles, and we, we award on the share of electric uh, vehicles and machinery on the sites. We don't calculate the CO2 emissions. Do you have any figures for the CO2 emissions that you have saved by using zero emission machinery in the different construction projects? Yeah, we're working on that. We don't have the real numbers, but we, we consider electricity as, as zero emission uh, in, elec in electricity use. So we don't count the, the, the CO2 from the production of electricity. Yeah, so effectively you're comparing the diesel powered machinery with zero emission machinery and the, the difference is what you would the diesel that you would consume effectively yeah, yeah. good okay um if there are no further questions then for a second time you released guru <laughs> then <laughs> let's move on in this case uh, then to the, our next working group which is on circular construction and here we have two co-leads in fact the city of harlem and the city of vienna um, and Rudy de Vries from Harlem is going to present, give us a short update now on the activities of the group. So Rudy, over to you. Yeah, I will try to share my screen. And let's say this is this one. Share. And are you seeing it now? Not Yes, yes, now we are. It's just come up. Okay, now that's nice. So, uh, yes, uh, we are co-leading it together with the city of Vienna. This is uh, the Circle Construction Working Group, which is also a very cooperative uh, group. Uh, yeah, the the screen we... has gone off, Rudy, I'm afraid. I'm not okay. sure what's happened there. Um, I didn't push any button, but I will do it again. And otherwise... Yep, we have it back now. Okay, it's strange, huh? Okay, um, yeah, and up to the next slide. Yeah, uh, you see the next slide? Yes, we can see it now. Okay, so uh, in the circular construction, uh, uh, um, that's also a very broad uh, uh, idea, of course. You can uh, circular construct uh, uh, buildings, but also groundwater and water works, uh, like the roads and infrastructure. Uh, we decided to uh, to focus on uh, well, what's what's here on circular low carbon solutions for asphalt, concrete, and base materials. So more on the materials which are mostly used in uh, roads and infrastructure, but also concrete is also being used in uh, buildings too, of course. And uh, well, and the, we we try to to look to reduce the embodied carbon and also to improve the life cycle perspective and resource wisdom in this construction works and our buildings. And uh, we had some in interested sessions on this. And uh, well, first we have here the group objective objectives and we want to, uh, to uh, try to uh, see if we have a joint approach to the market where we can get a bigger impact or better solutions, also to share the experience and market intelligence and procurement strategies, strategies because they are quite different in the, in the different cities, we've seen that. And uh, well, we'll get more knowledge on it uh, to build up the capacity on it. And uh, well, that's what we did. Um, now, this is an overview of the people who are uh, are the organizations who are in the in the uh, in the working group? Well, uh, Harlem and Vienna are have the lead, and Rotterdam, Zurich, and Brussels Mobility are also active participants. And we have this list of followers and also multipliers or knowledge shares 
uh, in the group, uh, which is very, which has been very helpful till now. Uh, uh, we'll have a very short, just a tip of a point of the approach, how we do it in the city of Harlem. Uh, well, we were in Harlem, we work with framework contracts with our commercial partners. And in this framework contracts, we have in the, in the market uh, consultation and also in the contracts in, embodied, we have also uh, higher sustainability uh, standards uh, and also have to think with us to get to solutions. And uh, for example, this one small example, design together a tool for a material hub. Uh, and we came up with a digital tool in this case, because well, Harlem is a very dense, dense city with not much spare grounds. So we have to find something more innovative or more uh, a feasible solution. And that is a, a digital material hub. Um, that's just one example of what the things we did in Harlem. And Another part uh, is how did we organize it in our own organization? Uh, because, well, we can ask on our, our commercial partners what they can do, but we also have to change uh, some parts on it. So we, we did write an instruction manual, manual about, uh, and that's about the raw materials plan where we implement on our projects in the city. So we have raw materials plan, so we know which materials we use, and where they go and, uh, and what they could do in the next life in the next cycle uh, after being used uh, what was the next uh, one but that's about circularity of course uh, and we uh, well, also one uh, interesting thing is we have we work with the climate budget in the city of Harlem and one of the results from this climate budget is is also that we when we start a project plan, it can be a small plan, but also a very big plan or like the new roads or reconstruction of certain parts of the city. And we have to, uh, uh, we are obliged now to input sustainability in this project, project plan and also to set targets or goals on CO3 reduction, uh, and which is, I think, uh, a very, can be a very good uh, starting point for real solutions at the start of the project. But most normally, what, what we did see is that we often we were too late with our sustain sustainability wishes or what, do, how do you call them? Uh, so we, uh, now we start at the very beginning of thinking of the project about sustainability, about circularity, about re reducing the, uh, the embodied carbon. Well, that's what our approach was. Now something about the knowledge sharing we did so far. Well, we did some good practices exchange with our with our experiences that were I did tell a little bit about it. And then we had a, a, also a webinar on the pilot products on asphalt because asphalt for roads has been used a lot. Of course, we see them we see it every day when we walk through the cities or drive through the cities. So we had to talk about the, the motorway near the city of Almere here in the Netherlands, which has been uh, do, uh, done by the Rijkswaterstaat. And they had a very innovative procurement process. And that's also focused on the requiring conditions instead of technical specifications. And, uh, and in the past, a lot of cities or, or bars used to have just only use technical specifications but we try to do a shift to requiring conditions so we get better uh, solutions, for example, for circularity. Uh, in the Netherlands, we use also this tool, the double cog, which can calculate something about the sustainability of the different, uh, of different scenarios you can have. Then we had a talk about the AltaPay project by the European Road Federation. Has also been on a big uh, on a scale of the European Road, uh, the, which is uh, organization about European and the road, of course, and they uh, they they were also starting a project about innovation solutions about like the binders that is this chemicals we used in 
in the asphalt to keep it, things together. It's a binder by replacing them by other things, by other uh, uh, chemicals or non-chemicals to make the road to Persia more circular. And then we had also about a story about you in the city of Utrecht, also about the, the uh, cycling paths, the refurbishment of them, and just to reuse the cycle paths uh, for other uh, cycle paths, I guess so. Uh, and it was also very interesting and for the not, uh, for the people who were attending them, it was very, uh, well, there they were very new, a lot of new things in this uh, webinar, I think so. Now, then we had some lessons learned and uh, well, we, you can see it on this diagram, which has been from the European Union of the Road Federation. And we see that uh, the long equity of recycled asphalt uh, and environmental friendly material in general is a very important topics. And well, and then we have to you have to take a look at the maintenance, of course. If you don't maintain it, and how do you maintain it? Then it will just go away from you, and you have to replace it with all new. So how you do a, can do a smart maintenance. Well, and uh, I think you, you can see it uh, yourself uh, on the picture, or maybe you have some questions about it, you can ask them uh, after, because we are now at the end of the presentation. And we also look very much forward to an in-person meeting in the city of Rotterdam, uh, where we have a, a market dialogue with a, with KVS, which is a, a, uh, which is a, a recycling asphalt company. Well, they make roads and they make asphalt, of course. And we're going to visit the facility of them and uh, try to see do a field trip in a Rotterdam to see uh, where they used recycled asphalt and what that did mean to them and how they, and we try to learn something from the city of Rotterdam, how they did they do that. I, I think we are on the end of the presentation. So if you have some questions, please ask them. Excellent. Many thanks, Rudy. Um, I have a rather unstable internet connection this end, so I was thrown out in the middle of your presentation, unfortunately, so I might have missed some of the, the good bits there, Rudy. But anyway, good to hear what's what's happening in the group. Um, obviously, this group is at a slightly earlier stage than the than the others in this sense. And so there's a lot to focus on the, the experience exchange at the moment, less so on the, the market dialogue, which should hopefully take place um, in more detail next year. Um, yeah. And also very much looking forward to this in-person event that, that will hopefully take place if unless things continue to deteriorate. Um, so yeah, uh, are there questions from the, the participants? Or again, if there are experiences that you also have that are relevant to asphalt or the other types of materials that Rudy uh, was talking about, it would be good to, to hear here. So put the questions in the, in the chat, um, or also uh, you can raise your hand. Um, or as with the others, we have this presentation, which will be shared with everybody, um, and you'll be able to contact um, Rudy directly. So any questions from participants? Okay, if not, then let's move on to our fourth and final group. And again, you can continue to put questions in the, in the chat as you go. Our final group is looking at something very different, um, digital healthcare and the different types of new innovative solutions in relation to that. Um, and this is actually being facilitated by my colleague, Raphael uh, from ICLE. So Raphael, over to you, if you'd like to share updates from what the group is working on. Yes, thank you, Simon. So I will share my screen as well. Hope you can see it now. So my name is Rafael Hirt. I'm an officer in the sustainable economy and procurement team working on um, projects related to innovation procurement. And uh, one of the roles and tasks that I have is to coordinate the digital healthcare solutions working group. 
I will present uh, today on the objectives of the working group and also on the activities um, implemented and planned for the near future. I'm planning to speak around 15 minutes and then we will have some time for Q&A session. A quick uh, overview here uh, in the beginning. So the time frame for the working group is two years. As uh, for the other working groups, uh, we started um, our work a year ago with the needs assessment and the recruitment of the buyers. And then the kickoff meeting uh, took place in uh, April this year. So now it's uh, seven months that uh, this working group is running. The uh, topic uh, that we could uh, specify also through the heat assessment is the digital healthcare solutions. And uh, there is uh, 17 uh, members, a different kind of institutions that is uh, working together um, here in this working group, ranging from central purchasing bodies to public hospitals to European research projects and municipalis municipalities. Um, these uh, 17 members are from uh, eight uh, European uh, member states, so France, uh, Germany, Greece, Latvia, Malta, Spain, and Sweden. So uh, yeah, given these uh, very different um, geographical locations, but also the different type of uh, organizations that is involved, uh, this makes it uh, definitely very interesting uh, to work with these uh, entities. Um, some words about the objectives, and I think uh, to some extent the objectives are similar to the objectives of the um, three working groups that have just been presented. So uh, we started with the identification of common uh, and unmet needs, collecting information on uh, challenges and also on the procurement plans of the participants. One of the main aim uh, for our working group is also to share uh, information on uh, good practice cases. And some of the participants uh, have done this in uh, webinars um, during the summer. Also, we are collecting information on uh, technologies and products that are available enterprises uh, across uh, Europe. Uh, one of the main activities is uh, the organization facilitation of uh, market consultations, market dialogues. Uh, we had the first one in uh, July um, in collaboration with the European Innovation Council and more market consultations uh, are planned in the near future. And then we're also uh, defining and sharing uh, procurement criteria. And um, one of the main uh, outcomes in the end uh, might be um, that we can uh, draft a joint uh, statement of demand. So this was at least um, also possible in the pilot phase uh, of the requires initiative, where I think for two of the three working groups in the end, uh, we were able to uh, publish a joint statement of demand. So much about uh, the objectives, um, maybe some more words also about the precise uh, topic of digital healthcare. So um, yeah, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic showed uh, the lack of digital, digital responsiveness in times of crisis, as it took uh, several months to de develop apps, uh, websites, QR codes, and um, yeah, tools for um, patient flow management. So this uh, clearly uh, showed the need to act on this. And we could um, yeah, further define two subtopics that are of interest to all of the members of the working group. So um, the subtopics are remote patient monitoring and tools for better data collection and analysis. Also, we're trying to make uh, the link to the overall topic of the Big Bias Initiative, uh, which is uh, sustainability, of course, is also uh, a very uh, crucial uh, topic for public hospitals and the healthcare sector in general, as, um, yeah, the um, hospitals consume huge amount of material resources and need to pay more attention to resource efficiency in the future. So let me quickly um, guide you through uh, the full list uh, of uh, membership of the working group. As I said, 17 members from eight uh, countries. We have uh, two institutions uh, from Catalonia with the Agency for Health Quality and Assessment of Catalonia and the Consortium de Salud y Social de Catalonia, which I saw the representative uh, Joseph is with us in the meeting uh, today. 
uh, from Italy uh, research institution Primadin that is representing the Nokia project. This is uh, a European funded research project focusing on emergency, emergency response um, solutions. Dataport from Germany, uh, Reza from France, uh, Central Purchase in Bali, Healthcare Without Harm that uh, joined as an expert on um, circular procurement in the healthcare sector. Then the National Centralized Health Procurement Authority from Greece that is responsible for all uh, procurement for all public um, hospitals in uh, Greece with an annual procurement budget of around 15 uh, billion. Also the Ministry for Health from Malta, the Central Procurement Supplies Unit that is responsible for the uh, supply um, uh, for the procurement of medical supply for all public hospitals in Malta. From Riga, the City Council and the Riga Maternity Hospital. Then another EU funded research project uh, called PD Project that is representing six university hospitals with uh, Karolinska University Hospital from Sweden uh, coordinating this project. And uh, the University of Calgary, which is um, in particular interested in AI solutions um, implemented and applied in uh, the medical uh, sector. From France as well, INI ASHA, which is a major player uh, representing around 1,000 public hospitals in France with an annual procurement budget of uh, 5 billion. Um, further on, Innova Puglia from Italy, uh, the BASP Foundation for Health Innovation and Research, Intersend, another uh, regional purchasing body from Italy, and last but not least, the Observatory on Management of Public Procurement and Contracts in Healthcare. From Italy, uh, which is a multiplier organization, as they're in touch with many uh, regional um, buying um, institutions in Italy. So, uh, out of these uh, 17 members, eight are more uh, or can be considered as a potential buyer, and nine institutions are more uh, as a follower in the group that want to learn from the experience from their uh, colleagues. Now, let me say a few words about activities uh, that have been implemented in the last uh, month. So the first meeting took place in February. This was an exploratory meeting to uh, get to know each other, to discuss the positive scope and the activities of the working group. Then the official uh, kickoff meeting took place in April, where all of the participants um, met for the first time and exchanged on common needs and also where the work plan was uh, established. Then we had uh, a first uh, market consultation that was organized uh, jointly with the European Innovation Council. Um, that is to say that uh, this was based on the needs of uh, one member of the consortium, the No Fear Project, so on emergency medical services and telemedicine. Um, I suppose that uh, some of you are aware of the um, e-pitching sessions that are organized by the European Innovation Council. So the European Innovation Council is a business accelerator financed by the European Commission that uh, supports and funds uh, more than 6,000 innovative uh, SMEs. Some of these are active in the healthcare field and some of these could then um, apply to um, pitch to the procurers of the Big Bias Working Group so we received around 50 applications. And out of this, the procurers could select the final uh, 10 participants, which uh, in the end uh, pitched their solution uh, in a five minute pitch to a participating procurers. And the procurers could also present their challenges to the company representatives. And after the event, there was uh, also some uh, follow-up activities, one-to-one uh, -one meetings between the companies and the procurers. So I'm mentioning this, uh, as I noted, um, well, many of you, you're not active in the healthcare field, but this, uh, let's say, offer from the EIC is also, of course, um, applicable for other fields as the pool of uh, 6,000 companies and provides uh, many uh, interesting innovative ideas. So if uh, your organization, your city is uh, interested in such a market engagement activity, feel free to approach me or just, um, yeah, you can also ask a question uh, after this uh, presentation, then I will be happy to provide more information on the EIC matchmaking activities. Um, but back to the work of the, of the Digital Healthcare Working Group. 
we had uh, two uh, webinars that were jointly organized with the UEP project, another EU-funded project um, that uh, provided insights um, on what they have been working on. So the project ended in summer 2020. And the first webinar session in uh, July provided insights um, on strategic value-based procurement. And the second session, um, provided more insights on the tools uh, for uh, strategic um, cross-border procurement. So uh, to be more precise, the legal framework and the choice of uh, procedure was presented as well as the development of business model for buyer groups and a three-step approach um, in the preparatory phase of cross-border innovation procurement. So uh, the members of the big buyers working group could really benefit from the findings and results of the Eureka project. And these findings are somehow also um, the theoretical framework of the work that we are doing and um, part, partly also planning to do. The uh, last um, working group meeting uh, took place just uh, end of October, where um, the uh, EIC representatives um, presented some of the support schemes that are available to um, buyers of innovation. So I already mentioned one, this is the organization of e pitching events, but there's more. There's also a new um, challenge platform that has been introduced just a couple of weeks ago where uh, procurers can uh, post their challenge on the platform and uh, companies can uh, respond and uh, post a potential solution to the needs. And it was also uh, presented that there will be uh, more support available next year for procurers of innovation, also um, financial support in the frame of a new project um, where um, there is four different actions that will be funded where procurers can apply for. There will be uh, 10,000 euro available for procurers doing a market um, a needs assessment, 10,000 euros available for procurers uh, doing a market consultation, up to 100,000 euros available for procurers piloting a new solution and uh, 50,000 euros available for procurers um, for the development of terms of, and, uh, of the terms of reference. So these um, kind of uh, EIC support for procurers of innovation uh, were presented to the members of the working group. And we're planning, I think I can already uh, say this, a similar um, meeting also for the three other working groups um, beginning of next year. What we are also doing at the moment is a collaboration with the EcoGrip Plus project uh, that has been active in the field for a couple of years. And that uh, could uh, define uh, six challenges. And some of these challenges are also linked to digitalization and sustainability. So uh, we invited the members of the working group to um, yeah, work jointly with the um, existing um, buyers that have already drafted joint statement of demand and to potentially uh, sign also uh, these uh, joint statement of demand that are linked to digitalization and sustainability. Um, what is planned next? More market engagement sessions and the list of uh, potential suppliers has uh, been proposed by the members of the working group. So it includes uh, big uh, American companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, but also small uh, players, uh, startups, scale-ups like uh, Human IT Care that um, will uh, potentially present their solutions to the members of the working group. And uh, some of the uh, activities foreseen for next year also include a more capacity training and building involvement of experts and researchers and uh, site visits and in-depth explanation of pilots uh, if the general conditions allow, and potentially also to provide uh, EU level recommendations. So um, yeah, about the expected outcome of the working group, um, we are intending to uh, increase the knowledge on the human criteria for innovative digital healthcare solutions to uh, support the market intelligence on current and upcoming products, to uh, innovate in public procurement, uh, introducing social and environmental criteria. And this is why we are also very happy to have uh, Healthcare Without Harm as a member uh, and specialist for uh, circular procurement. 
and uh, of course, yeah, to um, organize joint market engagement activities to share bias ambition to let the market know about the aggregated demand in this uh, specific field and uh, to share the technical solutions for the digitalization of the healthcare services. Uh, by this, we hope to uh, accelerate the acquisition of innovative digital healthcare solutions to support the market options that are also available for the EU peripheral regions. And uh, last but not least, also to support the uptake of innovative products on the supply side. So I wanted to speak for about uh, 50 minutes. I think the time is uh, coming to an end, but I will be happy to uh, answer questions. If, uh, yeah, if you have questions, please uh, just uh, let me know. Excellent. Thank you very much, Rafael, for the detailed uh, update. So yes, please, if people do have questions, put them in the chat or raise your hand. Um, now, we understand that this is a, a very different working group topic from the others. Um, so it may be that we don't have that many specialists in the, in the field of uh, procurement healthcare with us. Um, but I think the uh, what uh, Raphael was discussing in relation to the work with the EIC, for example, um, and the different types of market dialogue and engagement sessions that are taking place are extremely interesting. And if um, you haven't been able to attend a, an EIC session so far, then I would suggest that you, you try to do so and maybe approach um, Raphael about some of these opportunities that are taking place as well, um, whether in the healthcare field or, or a different field. Um, as there's a lot of focus and, and support, again, from the, the Commission in this area. Um, Raphael has put his uh, contact details in the, in the chat for that. Um, and again, we will be sharing the presentations. Good. Okay. Um, so if there are no further conversations, any further questions, comments about any of these topics, um, then we have come to the end of the main body of the, of the webinar for today. Um, once again, I would encourage uh, people to sign up to the, 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 the Observer Group um, so you can continue to get updates. We will organize another update webinar uh, in likely, I guess, spring or early next year. Um, and between times, we'd also send an email update. Um, this iteration of the Big Buyers Initiative runs until um, October next year, as Ivo said at the beginning. Uh, what, what happens after that, we don't yet know for certain, but I'm, I'm hopeful that this will continue as an activity, potentially also expand as an activity. We will see. Um, but what we also like to do is to try to encourage sharing uh, amongst the group um, as well. And to this end, we have prepared one final Slido question. Um, Caitlin, I wonder if you could open that up again. So the, uh, the link is once again in the, in the chat. Um, so if everybody could click on this and go to it. And what we're interested in hearing is if there are any other procurement sectors or areas or specific procurement needs that you are aware of where you think some form of uh, cooperative working group would be useful. So beyond the four that we have at the moment on heavy duty electric vehicles, zero emission construction sites, circular construction and digital healthcare, uh, there isn't scope for us to organize further working groups before the end of this current iteration but we are certainly able to act as a, a facilitator a matchmaker if you like um, to try to put together those who are interested in collaborating and potentially for next year as well to to make a, a pre-analysis of what might be interesting to look at and i can see we've already got uh, some interesting ideas here. Clothing, we know that uh, the, the area of clothing, textiles, is something of a lot of interest to uh, public authorities from a variety of different angles, not least due to the uh, upcoming waste uh, requirements regarding uh, textile waste. Sustainable food, uh, food is something which comes up again and again um, in discussions about procurement, um, particularly amongst the, the city members that we are working with. Um, lots of other uh, ideas coming in here. City food production, again, so zero kilometers, localized city, city food production. Uh, another couple of votes for sustainable food. Um, we've also got more on the specific healthcare areas. Medical devices is not something we're looking at so closely at the moment, but uh, could also be interested. interesting. ICT options, uh, such as data storage uh, and procurement of AI. Uh, are areas that we were considering at the beginning of this iteration of the big buyers um, and hopefully would have the opportunity to organize working groups next year on that if possible. 
uh, the topic of fair trade again so ethical impact of our procurement activities is of course of interest to a lot of cities uh, smart mobility and smart cities more generally as well so not just looking at the the vehicles that we're purchasing but rather the approach to purchasing full stop and the way that we are um, traveling around our cities the way people are traveling the way goods are traveling um, around cities and, um, and countries in europe very good okay renewable plastic um, absolutely uh, plastic is, is also something that, would, that cropped up at the beginning of uh, this big buyers round uh, something that there's a lot of political interest and support behind um, open ict utilities vaccines or drugs absolutely um, yeah great good to see so many uh, ideas for different areas of collaboration that we have um, we will of course collect these um, and take them into account as i say next year if things do continue if you are interested in trying to get some form of uh, informal collaboration going with other with other purchases in any of these topics please do get in touch with us directly and we'll see if there's some way that we can manage that outside of the existing working groups as well in any case thanks very much for your input on this and those are ideas that we can take forward okay so caitlin maybe if you could stop that screen and of course we will store that um good okay so unless anyone has any final last minute comments or questions relating to any of the working groups or the big buyers groups um then it just remains for me to to thank all of our our speakers today for the inputs that they've given and to thank you all for attending um, and we hope very much that we will see some or all of you in future big buyers activities as well all right thanks very much and have a good afternoon everybody thank you bye thank you bye thank you have a nice day bye bye, bye, -bye.